Right guys, so what we have here is the two crankshafts. This is the M111 crankshaft and this is the OM601 crankshaft. So the main difference between these two crankshafts is the M111 2.3 has a stroke of 88.4 millimeters and the OM601 crankshaft has a stroke of 92.4 millimeters. That difference makes the 2.3 stroke to a 2.4 litre. Um, now in the short that I did just showing that the crank actually fitted in the block, um, I did give the wrong specs for the crank. The specs I gave were actually for the 2.2. I'd said that it was 86.2 millimetres, I believe it was, and that's for the 2.2. The M111 2.3 is 88.4 millimetres of stroke standard. Now, there are a couple of other subtle differences with these. Um, the first one is the differences between these two drive sprockets. Well, if I hold this one the right way around, it'll help. The OM601 drive sprocket is slightly larger and a lot more durable, I dare say. Um, it certainly looks a more robust design, but is slightly larger and I believe has a few more teeth. Well, it'd have to, it's slightly larger. Um, so with that said, it means I'm going to have to use the original M111 uh, drive sprocket and timing chain uh, sprocket on the OM601 crankshaft. Um, probably going to have to order a new one of these because this one is quite well worn out you can see on the teeth there uh, the angles of some of them uh, that's where that's where you see that this is a high mileage engine um, but I'm not too worried about things like that the other sort of difference is uh, a difference that Luke at Diesel Pump UK actually pointed out in his most recent video regarding um, uh, crankshaft pulleys, um, I definitely recommend checking out Diesel Pump UK. He likes to make a lot of his own stuff in house, which is great. I love to see companies like that, and I've watched Diesel Pump UK grow as a company um, throughout playing with these engines and being around Mercedes cars myself. Although it's OM606, the OM606 engine is just as cool as an M104 or anything like that. It's essentially a diesel 2JZ as some people call it. The difference that Luke pointed out was the key weight. Now the M111 or at least my one has this spindly long bit of metal for a key and that slots in just here. Now, the problem that has been causing, apparently, at some higher RPMs on OM606 engines is the actual key itself shearing and the crank pulley then spinning around on the crank. And of course, once one end of this comes loose, it starts causing carnage and your timing can slip. And it's just catastrophic. Now, Mercedes, when you try and order a keyway from them, this is what you will get now. Your typical half moon sort of shaped key. You get two of these. So, one will do your crank poly, and one will do your timing gear and oil pump drive poly your sprocket rather. Now, that gives more reliability. Not only are these far stronger, I mean, there's far more metal to that, if you can see it, than to the thin sliver. Um, that's gonna be far more durable. That's more likely to stand up to higher RPMs. Now, that's great that Mercedes rectified it, and it's by pure coincidence that I've ended up with a crank with that, which is ideal because of obviously what I'm doing with this engine. 
Now, that adds the reliability to it, but the biggest difference is you can see with these two cranks, although they are similar, you can see that the OM601 crank is far more agricultural than the M111 crank. Um, ideally, this needs to be knife edged and lightened because it doesn't need to be that beefy for the rotating assembly of an M111 engine. Right guys, so just bear in mind that this whole build is essentially an experiment. I'm just bringing you guys along for the ride. I know that some things I'm doing with it, they're not the right way of doing it. I'm learning as well. I'm just sharing my learning experience with you guys because that's what I want to do. That's what the channel's about, discovering new things because essentially this is a whole journey of discovery um, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. You've seen us blow up the SLK countless times um, and that's through just using a stock block and a turbo that was just way too big for what was needed. With this build, I'm trying to do it, I won't say I'm trying to do it right because there are some things that I should do differently, but I want to use the MLS head gasket, the ARP head studs, I'm stroking it. It's gonna be more of a low revving engine than a high revving engine and I want it to deliver the power down low. The rods that I'm using will not be a direct fit for an M111 engine. They are shorter, and they are shorter to account for the stroke increase on the crank, because if I left the standard rods in, the pistons would actually be above the deck height of the standard M111. So I would then need to actually machine the crown of the piston, which is not something that I want to do because that's a fairly reasonable crown, but you machine that down, there's just not enough there for the ringland to not suffer some kind of damage. The chances are it will just break and chip up. So, I want to try and keep these pistons as standard as possible. If I do along the way come across a decent set of pistons that aren't going to break the bank, then I will probably do that. But for now, the plan is to use these stock pistons, which doesn't fill me with confidence. So that said, that's a bit of an explanation into the differences with the crank why I'm using the components I am to make this all work. As I said, it's a journey of discovery. We've got to find out what works, what doesn't work. This engine could destroy itself relatively quickly or it could prove to be a really reliable combination. The thing is to expect nothing and then you'll be surprised if it all works out. That's what I'm trying to keep thinking. Anyway, that said, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, help the channel grow. Um, enjoy the journey. You might not always like everything that you see, but I'm just doing this for fun. Just doing this to help share my experience with the Mercedes community. And those of you that want to learn a bit more, you can learn a bit more. So, again, thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.